I've already recorded this video once prior, but what's going on guys? My name is Zenith. Today I'm going to show you my Yamaha R7 and let you know if it's worth it. Should you buy this thing? Should you not? Should you buy an R6 instead? What's the deal? So let me go ahead and give you a cold start. Before I do that, I want to let you know I do have an exhaust on it. It is an eye stunt exhaust with a baffle in, so just keep that in mind as I crank this bad boy up. <laughs> absolutely beautiful in it good old cp2 engine let me get out of here go find a little place to record because this video is about showing off my bike not my address so let me drive away a little bit and then i'll get back to you guys in just a second here let's get this thing started shall we so throughout this video i'm going to explain a couple things whether i think it's a good beginner bike advanced bike should anybody buy it period and i'm probably going to make some comparisons to other bikes that i've ridden in the past to get that out of the way i've ridden a grom a ninja 400 an r3 zxxr r6 so i got a good little uh, taste of the motorcycle world if you will and r7 obviously so first things first i'm going to talk about people who are just starting to ride is it a good bike to buy as a first bike because i get this question more than i could ever imagine uh, the answer is always the same every time which is it depends yes and no okay so let me dive into that so the r7 has a lot of low-end torque which means that whenever you twist the throttle it's gonna go okay but it doesn't have a bunch of high-end torque similar to the r6 the r6 at about 10,000 rpms it's just like a whole nother beast the r7 in my opinion feels like the r6 if it had a rev limiter at 10,000 rpms below that it feels pretty much the same maybe 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 i might be smoking crack here but sometimes i feel like the r7 has more torque on the down low uh, i don't know if that's factual or not i could just be absolutely making things up but that's just how i feel um, but if i had to say they feel pretty similar so back to the beginner talk the reason i say it depends is because if you have two wheel experience i say if you were like a good mountain biker or like bmx biker or you have that stability already under your belt i think the r7 is perfect and if you have dirt bike experience absolutely send it go for an r7 i don't recommend going for an r6 ever i always highly recommend against that regardless of dirt bike experience or not some people will disagree with me with that it's a big controversy in the world but with that being said if you've never touched anything with two wheels you have maybe car experience I don't know that probably doesn't even translate at all I would recommend sticking to something like a Ninja 400 or something like that it's not to say that you can't start on an R7 you absolutely could but just know that these bikes are a little more expensive than a Ninja 400 and if you don't have that stability under your belt already from like two-wheel riding experience then just know that the odds of dropping your bike like in the driveway or something like that is a lot higher and I personally I don't know about you I'd much rather drop a Ninja 400 than an R7 because a $10,000 bike is a little more expensive than a four or five thousand dollar bike i don't know yeah i think it's math i could be wrong again but that's just how i feel about it so for beginner bikes it depends and it's kind of use your best judgment sort of thing i will note i will note i know a lot of beginners are short i don't know what it is maybe because like some people are like 14 15 talking about getting on a bike and you know girls you're usually kind of screwed at this point you're kind of maxed out you kind of peaked it's like me in high school men you usually grow a little more after that this bike is a little taller compared to the zx6 i rode that bike was lowered in the front so that's not really a fair comparison but i did ride an r6 i believe it was a 2016 and the r7 is definitely taller than that my girlfriend is five foot two and she tried to swing a leg over and she couldn't even touch the ground like she could not ride this bike i'm sorry love you to death but not gonna happen <laughs> however you know i'm 5'11, i can flat foot it can we just say I'm six foot? Let's agree with that. Okay, I'm six foot and I can flat foot it. Oh, that feels so much better, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Now let's go ahead and talk about some engine specifications for this beast of a motorcycle. So obviously, it is a sport bike. As you can tell, it's full fairing sport bike. It is the exact same, almost bike, to the MC-07. Pretty much the same thing. The only difference is that it has fairings and there's some minor suspension adjustments and whatnot. That is by far the ugliest car I've ever seen in my life in front of me there. So I'm gonna gap this guy just to shove it in his face. But as you can see, it's a, it's a fun bike, okay? But back to what I was saying, MT-07 is the exact same bike. They both have the CP2 engine, which is a two-cylinder, um, 689cc engine. So it's called an R7, you kind of get scammed on that because it's really not 700, it's 689, but there's a Cybertruck. Hey, buddy. I think those are kind of sick, to be honest with you. A lot of people are going to be wondering, okay, well, why don't I just get an R6? It's slower. It's 600cc's, better beginner bike, more well-rounded, right, Daddy Zenith? 
No, I'm not at all. Because here's the big difference is that the R6 and ZX6R, these 600cc bikes have four cylinders. The Yamaha R7 has two. So what this means is we don't have that high revving range. My bike red lines at 10,000 RPMs as opposed to the R6. It's something like 14 or 16,000. It's a lot more. And you have two extra cylinders. It's like comparing a two liter four cylinder car to a two liter six cylinder car. I don't think they make that, but if they did, theoretically, obviously the six cylinder is gonna be faster. It's the same sort of concept here with that. Additionally, I already talked about the height. The, the ride height is a little bit taller. This bike is kind of girthy. I didn't even notice it because this is the first sport bike I've ever had. And actually the first one I've ever ridden either. It was kind of news to me when I swung a leg over the R6 and it's like, oh my God, this thing is tiny. So small, so beautiful, so cute, so petite. But the R7 is not that. Uh, I'm not saying it's a big bike by any means. It's no Harley or anything. Thank God I'd off myself. It's still got some size to it. <laughs> even though that doesn't matter. Okay, the size does not matter. This isn't about motorcycles at this point. Nextly, I wanted to touch upon the idea of buying an R7 in addition to your other fleet of motorcycles, which you will have soon. Um, do I think it's fitting in a garage with fleeter bikes, groms, etc., etc.? I think so. It's kind of its own class. People were mad whenever the R6 got discontinued because they're like, how is the R7 going to replace the R6? It's nowhere near as fast. That's true. That's very true. But that's because it's a different bike. You know, I love this thing to death for multiple reasons. First, it handles extremely well. You can take this thing on the track and it's gonna absolutely kill it. Um, you could gap leader bikes on the track if you know what you're doing. And it's got plenty of speed for that sort of environment as well. In addition to such a thing, I also wanted to mention the fact that, oh yeah, there's a bike over there, I wanna go say hi. You can also learn to stunt on this thing. Since it's a low revving bike, similar to the MT-07, it's great to get that front wheel up. Power wheelies aren't really gonna be a thing on here. Maybe first gear if you weigh three and a half pounds. I do not. I weigh 180 of those things, so I will not be power wheeling. Uh, I do have a friend who, who can do it. I, I don't know, I haven't really tried to figure it out that much, but clutch ups are super, super easy. Second gear, pull the clutch in, rev it up a little bit, drop it, it flies right up. It's super nice. It feels super smooth. It's quite nice because you can really just do whatever you want to do with this. In short, I think this is a great bike to add to your garage, regardless of what kind of bike you have. Because like all bikes, it's a different experience. You know, you'll see guys with Ducati V4s buying a Grom. It's like, why did you just buy a Grom that's a lot slower? Like, yeah, but it's a different bike. It's a different experience. And it's the same sort of thing with this because it's a different experience. In addition, it's also a great commuter bike. Uh, it's super sport positioned, so it does get a little bit uncomfortable, but aside from that, better on gas than a 600cc. I know motorcycles, you don't really have to worry about gas to begin with because they don't use any at all compared to a car. <laughs> I think I get like 45 miles a gallon is my average on this thing. And I ride it kind of hard, I'm not gonna lie. I'm always up high in the revs, but if you drive it like a grandma, you can easily get 55 or so. I've said nothing but positive things right now, and I'm just not realizing that. And I'm trying to think of some negative things, but man, I really just can't. I do like this bike. I'm sorry for riding it like a horse, but I honestly just think it's quite nice. The only thing I don't like is a small, small cosmetic thing. If you've looked at R7s, I'm sure you've heard people complain about it before. It's a little fog light on the front of the bike. I'll put a picture on screen of it. Uh, that's like the only way, in my opinion, to tell the difference between the R6 and the R7 from like a quick first glance. That's what I always look for. I'm like, oh, fog light, R7. Like if they don't have the numbers on the side. But yeah, I just think it's kind of funny that they put that on there. That's not even just like decoration fog light. It's your main headlight is that little thing. I don't know why I keep calling it a fog light if it's definitely a headlight. But it's kind of funny how they, I don't know, I feel like they could have made it a little bit cooler looking, uh, but they didn't, so we kind of got to deal with it. Super sick bike. I don't have any other problems with it. You get the adjustable suspension, you get the clip-ons, you get the whole sport bike experience, and it's a fraction of the price compared to an R6 or an R1. Especially now with the newer gen R6s going up in price since they're being discontinued. I think this is a great thing not to settle on, but like, you know, maybe before you save up enough money to get one of those R6s or R1s or whatever, it's a good little stepping stone. It's a great second bike, it's my second bike. I had a Grom before this and then I have a Grom now again. Oops, accidental. But I bought this, traded the Grom, put cash on top and bought this thing for 6,500 cash. You can usually get one pretty much brand new for about 10,000 or so, give or take. It really just depends on where you live and things like that, but it's not bad for what you get out of it. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the video here. I gotta go home and edit this thing because I'm a day behind schedule already. Haven't uploaded on YouTube in quite some time now, sorry about that. 
But thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you next week in a video that comes out at the right time, ideally. If I can get in this lane, that would be just terrific, wouldn't it? Thank you all so much. I love you. Have a wonderful day or evening or whenever I get this video up. And I'll see you later. Peace out.